Hello, everyone, and welcome to our studio. Today, we have a very special guest. Hello, Professor Shushain, all the way from China. Your, your story is amazing, and I really want you to share it with you know, our audience today. You are a professor, and you teach uh, in China Jewish studies. Yes. That, uh, in it, that in itself is amazing. So talk to us about it. How did you start, it, and what do you do? Now I'm in Syria, I'm a professor of Jewish studies at Nanyu University, where we established a center for Jewish studies in 1992. Amazing. So that uh, now become the leading institute for research of Jewish and Israel studies. What made you uh, decide to pursue that? Well, let's have stretched to a little bit earlier in the late 80s. I had opportunity uh, went to the United States mm -hmm. and then lived with the Jewish family. Uh -huh. That changed the course. Oh. Uh, previously, no Chinese really understand Jewish people. No, they are very much interested in this. But uh, that uh, time provided me an opportunity living with Jewish family for almost two years. And then I've seen all aspect life of Jewish people, which so was the very human much connection, me. basically. Yeah, that's the human the connection. Now, when I was start work at Nan University in 1977, mm -hmm. I was an English major. I worked for uh, English department, like uh, English language and mm -hmm. literature. Mm -hmm. and my personal research field was, if we trace back, has anything to do with Jewish subjects, was American Jewish authors. Wow. But uh, it's amazing. So you're talking about, like, Jews in America? Yes. That's Basically, from literature, mm -hmm. and then I never thought I would go beyond literature or American Jewish authors, that topic I but have been did. doing for almost 10 years. Okay. But as I mentioned, when I had the opportunity to live with Jewish family, that changed the whole course, because the experience I had was really inspired me and a great, great deal if we understand the China situation in late 80s, mm -hmm. uh, China yes was about to change, we had opened our policy, yes. and we want uh, science technology. China sent uh, thousands of thousands of young people go to westward to study. Yes. I was one of them, and then so have the opportunity to see the outside world. Uh, then, of course, uh, was lucky with the Jewish family called the Friend family, originally from actually Montreal, Canada. Oh. They moved to Chicago. So Canadian, we, become, okay. we were friends and they invited me to stay with them. So I was uh, asked to teach at uh, Chicago State University for two years. About Jewish studies? Uh, no, no, when I was there, I was not really Jewish Got you. field. Got you. So, so tell me something. Do you see a difference? Because I've been hearing a lot in the media in the past number of years that Jews, I mean, we're all one family, but the Jews in America are very different than the Canadian Jews. Do you well, see? We are fascinated by their life, their way of thinking, mm -hmm. because that's based on my day-by-day day contact. Daily contact with them, and you see the different things. But Especially, the Canadian Jews or no, the American Jews? American Jews. Oh, okay. So you still have to spend some time with us now here okay. in Canada. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> we'll invite you to spend some time okay, with us. Okay, to try to learn. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the Chinese and, and the Jewish are very, you know, ancient civilization. Exactly. So I know you've been studying them and you have your own theory. I love to hear your theory as why do you think... Um, the Jews have been uh, surviving and after so many years of persecution and I think in, we talked about it before the show that in every century mm -hmm. there was some kind of persecution of the Jews and still surviving and what's our future hold? Like, I mean, you know, things don't look so great for us now. The Jewish survival in history is one of the things that inspired many Chinese. I'm one of them. Okay. Uh, I must say, at the very beginning, I show myself a great interest in Jewish studies is how Jews survived, especially experience of Jews yeah. who live in diaspora. Yes. Because there were of millions of Chinese also live outside of China. That's right. We do not really use diaspora, but we use overseas 
live in overseas, yes. abroad, yes. being that. Yes. And the Jewish experience, uh, based on my understanding, mm -hmm. really provide, could, could provide lessons for overseas Chinese. As a matter of fact, I, after I've been into the Jewish study field, some Chinese communities in the United States, in Canada, mm -hmm. even in Hong Kong, invited me to talk about it, uh, how Jews survived, because based on their understanding, uh, Jewish community was very effective and active and also uh, had the strength to hold people together. They want to learn from Jews. So, That's one of the things when So I, why do you think they survived? Well, I think the uh, Kehila system okay, makes yeah. it very important because Jews are responsible for any one, other Jews. For one another. Yeah, one of another. That's yeah. very important concept. Yeah. And also they have a, a minya system and the Jews cannot have a Jewish life before modern time, you have to have other Jews that's who work together. That's right. I think uh, yes. the, the, that the, we because, take it. I think we take it sometimes for granted, but you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, first, because yeah. uh, I, I I try to tell uh, my Chinese uh, people in this country, and I say this is one of the things. If you yes. do daily prayers, you need to, uh, at least ten people. I mean, yeah, they have to yeah. groups many other Chinese and then live have close contact. You're so right. You know, there was, uh, there was um, in, in Toronto, there was um, two cases lately this summer that of, uh, one of them was of a Holocaust survivor that I guess had no family and had no minion. So somebody called out, for, I guess from the community, uh, the story about this man that he had no family. You know how many people showed up? Mm -hmm. I think every Jew in, wow. in the city yeah, that, showed how that's for, a strength of Jewish his, people for in his diaspora. funeral to you know for his last you know walk that that he must have a minion. Yes, yeah. there was like two cases like that. So that, that, that's yes, a, that's great. And also that's a lesson I believe Chinese should learn. And in order to learn from Jews, you have to understand Jews. Yes. And also at the time, China is about to open to the West want to do business with right. the world, and they have to understand them. You see, without proper understanding, how could you do business with them? Then we realized at that time, China, we called open door policy, right. basically for, to open for Western world. Of right. course, today we said open to all over the world, including Africa, South America, whatever. But really when they started, it means to Western world right. and to be open, you want to do business, but you have first have to understand them. Yes. That's why when I started my teaching career at Nanjing University in 1977, China was about to change, and the Chinese leader Mao died a year before. Then it took a few years. Uh, uh, changes happened. But in that process, we realized at the university in particular, we introduced Occidental studies to begin with. Mm. When you introduce Occidental studies and Jewish elements there, because the Western civilization uh, by and large was built on two, what we understand, pyros. One is the Greek Roman tradition, yes. right? The other is Judeo Christian tradition. Judeo -Christian tradition. You, see, you have yes. to understand Jews in order to understand the West. That, that's how in my mind, when I had the opportunity to meet Jews, to understand Jews, I think I should go back to China to talk about it, if possible, to teach about it. It's amazing. Tell me, I mean, so, so you, you understand, you've studied, you've seen us, you know what makes us yeah, really work as a goal. people. Yeah. I mean, I believe that if we're united as a people, we'll survive anything. That's always been my belief, as long as we're united. When we're not united, that's when we can lose. My question to you is, in modern time, what do you think, uh, what do you think anti-Semitism is, is in the rise? Well, it's like really a yeah, problem. You, you mean today? People. Yeah, modern well, time, yeah. Well, the anti-Semitism uh, in the world today has a lot to do with anti-Semitism in the past. Uh, yeah, sure. So if we under should understand today's anti-Semitism, you have to understand it with past why anti-Semitism came into being. And anti-Semitism is something can catch, you know, the old one influence new one. 
Now today, basically, especially after the Second World War, mm -hmm. and the Western world in particular, mm -hmm. realized that persecution or anti-Semitism was wrong because uh, like Nazi Germany mm -hmm. carried anti-Semitism, which finally uh, terminated more than 600 Jewish people. You see, that, that's Six because and that's yeah. a lot to do with anti-Semitism. Sure. That's could consider the uh, highlight of the development of anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. But after the war, people realized that there was a tendency in the West, based on my understanding, some people tried to get over this, but unfortunately, anti-Semitism uh, took a new turn. Yes. For instance, especially establishment of State of Israel. Today, anti-Semitism has a lot to do with the attitude of the world towards Israel, especially in the Middle East conflict, to come blame almost everything we're happened so, in the Middle we're, East. We're so, you, we're so used to it, you know, yeah. when something happens, yeah, okay, of course Israel is going to get blamed for it. But why? Well, uh, like I still, I, 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 sometimes it, it boggles uh, my mind because uh, I don't understand I why. I believe today is basically a political reason. It, it's so? not like in the history from religious, uh, from social, from psychological, but this is a more or social, but this is more from political uh, issues, mm -hmm. especially after the establishment of Israel and then, for instance, uh, uh, deny of Holocaust. That's the purpose is to make Israel lost its legitimate to legitimate. establish yep. its own country. Yep. You see, w w why Iran against, uh, you know, was deny Holocaust? You see, that this is. Uh, you know, I've 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 heard that that you know uh, some people that you know d deny the Holocaust, but you know the Holocaust is is the most documented. Exactly. You know, you know Holocaust in 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 all centuries, and it wasn't documented by the Jews. It was uh -huh. documented by the Nazis, by the Allies, by you know the the the, the American, the Russian, you know the Germans themselves. I, I, exactly. Love exactly. to document, so exactly. it's so documented. How can you deny it happened? You know we didn't. In, the Jews didn't invent it. Mm -hmm. but exactly. That's that's the reason. You know that uh, there's catastrophe happened in the world in history in the last two thousand years. Yes. It's a lot of wars. But the Holocaust is one, as you mentioned, the mostly documented. Yes, you know, they can't deny it. Help me out and, and tell me, how does the program uh, work in China? Well, Jewish study program, if you mean, really yes. was started in the late 80s. Okay. When China about to change and to do business, China joined the WTO in the 90s. You see, but that's the 80s prepared. So we realize if we do the business with the West, we need to understand the Western society. And in, among them, Jews contribute a great deal in the last 2,000 years. Yes. Many things uh, become that, uh, popular, uh, for, for instance, uh, like a uh, democratic system mm -hmm. and a um, uh, welfare system. Mm -hmm. We would yeah. choose what Trotaka kind of concept to help unfortunate people and come originally from Jews yeah. or Judaism in many ways, of Tadaka, course, through yes. Jing, yeah, uh, sure. tradition, and then especially the way to do business, uh, to sign the contract, uh, to uh, obey the rule of law, mm -hmm. and this kind of things becomes very important. Uh, mm -hmm. China really needs to learn more about it uh, when they're dealing with uh, Western people in particular. So we, the purpose is to Jewish study programs in China try to uh, teach about Jewish civilization. What are the Jews? And of course, in modern time, we have to teach what is Israel, you see? Because when started, China did not have normal relation with Israel in the 80s. But okay, I can tell you, I have to stop you, because 25 years ago or 26 years ago, they started, because I, I was in China 26 years ago, and the first ambassador to China just arrived when I was there. Okay. So it was like 26 years ago. Exactly. Whoa, that was a long yeah, time. Yeah, 26 yes. ago. Yes, so, I remember. Yeah, it takes a while 
now Ch China oh, and Israel grow, grows in such a closer way. Good. Uh, by my judgment, is the relationship between China and Israel is much closer or better than being reported. Because one of the oh, reasons China, politically speaking, still supports uh, Arabs and Palestinian causes mm -hmm. more than anything else. But, but uh, after New China established, especially after Badong Conference, Suez Canal crisis, mm -hmm. Chinese uh, foreign uh, policy was uh, fixed, stood on the Arab side. Mm -hmm. uh, only after China Israel established diplomatic relations, yes. that kind of uh, attitude uh, changed. Pre before that, there's anything happening in the Middle East, normally our medium blame on Israel. And, uh, Thank God they changed. Yeah, but after <laughs> yes. we established diplomatic relations, okay. at least they provide the background. Yeah. Why Israel behave this way? Why Israel attack, attack it in such a way? So that uh, gives the reason, background, it's important the uh, Chinese uh, medium is more fairly treated with uh, Middle East issues because we want to have good relationship with both sides, Arabs and the Jewish people. I think the Jews want that too. Sure. I think most Jews, we don't want war, we don't want uh, conflict. I think most of us just want to be left, you know, in peace. So, exact, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Especially today, China's economy will develop in a different direction. They mm. try to change it based on innovation rather than the basic manufacturers. Yes. Manufacturing is important, but innovation, innovation. becomes more important. Absolutely. Israel becomes that startup nation. Yes. So China uh, defined its relation with Israel as innovative partnership. That's beautiful. That, so that, that, that's that, wonderful. You, you can see, because of this and the many delegations, uh, people visit Israel in the last five years, the book Startup Nation translated once it's translated into Chinese. It's wow. it been read by millions of Chinese. One of the best sellers wow. in China. You could wow. imagine. I have many friends and then talk, uh, invite me to talk about it. And also in the last three years, I went to Israel more than 20 times. Wow. <laughs> more than most of us. Yeah, yeah. More, more than, you know, only mentioned in the last three years because wow. there was such demand. Yes. You see, government delegation, university delegation, uh, yes. business delegation, academic field delegation. They all want to visit it to have a better understand yes. of Israel in order to, you know... Uh, well, we're lucky. I mean, as an Israeli, as a Jew, I think we're very lucky that uh, to have a friend like China. Yeah, so the Jewish study program, mm -hmm. now we said Jewish and Israel study to emphasize Israel study. But when we started, uh, we mentioned Jewish study, they covered Israel. Right. Today, Israel uh, becomes the uh, it, yeah. forward. I you understand. see, and the more people go to Israel, like me, in the last 20 years. Uh, and you see, 20, you really see yeah, what it's like yeah. over there. Since my first time in Israel, 88, now 30 years. In the first 25 years, I still went to America more often than Israel. Though I went to Israel every five, then every three years, yes. <laughs> now the every year, now multiple times a year. You, you see the changes, the but frequency Do you, do you see changes. the change in Israel? Exactly. Because I see every time I go to oh, Israel, I see oh, the change. Oh, it's, tell it's, me about it. It's amazing. Because it, sometimes people talk about the great changes happening in China. That's true. I personally experienced that. Right. But in my mind, Israel changed a great deal too. Yes. When I was in... Uh, Israel 88 for first time. Fair. Now later on, they compare it. It's a road much wider. Right, city, like more building. buildings, especially like uh, Jerusalem, grow so big. Yes. You know, the, the, I still remember when I was picked up from Ben Gurion Airport to Jerusalem. The way they turned to see the Jerusalem today is totally different from the time I first saw it. Yes, it's it's it's. I know every time I go, it's amazing how. You yeah, know, changes, the, the enormous, changes, enormous. You know, so you learned a lot of Hebrew words. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, in the Jewish field, you have to learn Hebrew. 
Oh. Unfortunately, uh, I only spent like eight weeks at Open Archive Natania. That was in 1993, my second time visit Israel. So, wow. but unfortunately, I don't really practice a lot, come back. <laughs> yeah. But we do teach Hebrew to our wow. uh, graduate students. We have a Jewish program. Our students basically MA, PhD student candidates, and they all learn Hebrew. Wow. We have a That's faculty amazing. who are major in Hebrew in the early wow. time. He, Professor Jeremiah Meng, who was first Chinese college student sent to Israel to learn Hebrew. Wow. Now he works uh, in our institute. So you could imagine. You know, that's it's beautiful. Just, yeah, I think that's be I think that's beautiful and 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 commendable for you to actually. You know, I think a lot of the time that I see people that you know, I don't want to get into anti-Semitic again, but a lot of it is because they don't know. You uh -huh. know, they don't have the information. They don't take the time to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and meet. You know, meet. You know, meet us. I remember my son wrote um, an essay when he was 13 years old. And one of the lines he said there, why do they hate us? They don't even know us. Okay. okay. So, you know, and that's stuck in my, because if you really know us, I mean, in every, in every community, there's, you know, good and bad and so forth. Yeah, but sure as a can. whole, as a community, we're good people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I think if you get to know us, then, then, you, then you see the goodness in, in, in the people. Yeah, but for Chinese, yes. it's a Jews with the ancient people like yes. Chinese who have... We share many similarities, long history, uh, good family tradition, yes. and then harmonious society, yes. and emphasize on education, also uh, and, uh, very productive in history, but also uh, that language. Chinese language almost never changed. We can read uh, any documents written two to three thousand years when discovered on earth, we could read them. Right. But Hebrew is the same. Yes. And also good universities, great universities in the world, I believe, need to teach Latin and Hebrew. Because that's what's the two I, ancient I most useful listen, language. I will hope they will listen <laughs> to you <laughs> and teach us. So we don't, we don't have a lot of time. Like it's, it's, you're amazing. Um, a few words for the future. What do you think? For the future for the institution, for the future uh, of China. I believe Israeli there's a relation. great future for our institute. Okay. Uh, our institute is uh, named after uh, Glazer because uh, the Glazer family is a major fund uh, founder for our institute. And uh, okay. we have a great future because uh, in the past uh, uh, 25 years, at least since we established in 1992, mm -hmm. And uh, we had the uh, impact in, the, uh, in China. And oh, then fun. we have more students and more demanded. And we hold international conference, national conference. Definitely we, ha we still have a role to play. And also we think the mm. Chinese are more and more interested in Jewish subjects. Any Jewish Beautiful. subjects that makes them interest, either history or their achievements or the development of Israel, or Middle East conflict, you have to understand it's very Israel. Com it's very and complicated so that's a, conflict. That's a, that's a good, that's a future. Yeah. The, when you go to the future, and also as we move further on, mm -hmm. and innovation become very important. Israel, small nation, played a bigger role. You see, they were so innovative uh, nation, yeah. and they think differently, they do things differently, which contribute uh, what anything they inno invent will not only benefit themselves, but the whole the world. The world, yeah. That, that's how we believe yeah. a yeah. Jewish study uh, has a room to play. Of course, uh, we do Jewish studies. We also uh, concern other cultures like uh, Arab culture. We still want to learn more about it. Hopefully, you know, China could play a bigger role in Middle East conflict. But that's a different study. That yeah, would exactly. be Arabic yeah, study. This Arabic is we talk study. about yeah, Jewish yeah. But we yeah. do share. Yeah, is, of course. We share with Arab scholars. We're all one world. Yeah, that, that, that's the Absolutely. Importance. I'm for peace. I'm, we need to solve our conflict and, you know, have a better future for our, you know, for our next and, you know, many, and many generations to come. Sure. I, for Chinese, to have, keep a close contact with Jewish people, Jewish community, either in Canada, 
in United States, in Britain, is very important. And okay. also to keep close contact with Israel. To understand Israel better is very, very important because that brings, give the sources for the further development of Jewish status in China. Well, I think you're doing a great job. Oh, and my, you're going to continue to do a great job. And it's, I know, it's great pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I know you're, you, you don't have a lot of time here in Canada, but hopefully the next time you come to visit us, sure, you come to sure. visit us in the studio and let us know what's going on. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for inviting me here. Oh, no, thank you for what you're doing. We really appreciate it. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And I'll say, see you next week.